Hello everybody, I'm Susan. I'm the speech pathologist with Houston Area Parkinson's Society and this is another Speech with Susan video. Um, welcome to Costa Rica. I'm sitting out on my patio and I, I think it's a little bit too bright for you to see but the lake's right back there and then there's a volcano right about in this area. But anyway, it's a beautiful place to be. It's uh, serene and you can hear the wildlife, uh, different animals and birds and monkeys. Um, anyway, wonderful place to be. So speech is going to be focusing on our breath support, swallowing, cognitive skills, and the strength of our voice. And we're gonna be doing a few exercises. I'll want you to stop the video and practice it a few more times. So we'll, so in the purpose of time constraints, we're going to do it one time, then I'll say stop the video and do it about four more times. First off that we're gonna be doing is holding an ah sound for 20 seconds. And this is a, a breath support exercise. So you're gonna take a big deep breath and let's start with a good strong ah. Ah. Great. Pause the video and do it about four more times. Welcome back. I bet you did do that. Let's do the next one. Uh, this is a high-pitched E sound. We hold for three to five seconds, and this is to uh, work the muscles that, the superior laryngeal muscles that pull the larynx up and hold it, and we do it six, one right, succinctly, one right after the other, and we hold it for three to five seconds, and we'll do this about five times. Okay, here we go, high-pitched E. Again. Again, again, one more time. Great. Next on the list are uh, swallowing exercises. And what we do is there's an exercise called the Masako where you stick your tongue between your teeth and your lips, anchor it there and swallow. So if you watch me, you can kind of see the squeeze in my throat. It's the larynx elevating just a tiny bit, and I'm swallowing. What makes this difficult to do is always, your whole life, your tongue goes back towards the back of the mouth to touch the posterior pharyngeal wall, or that wall that you're looking at when you're at a doctor, that the doctor looks at when he tells you to open your mouth and say, ah. Um, that's the wall that's there. The tongue always goes back to hit it, but because you've got your tongue forward, that wall has to come forward to uh, and meet the uh, back of the tongue. And that's a valving uh, positioning for the, for the swallow. So you're doing it like this. Let's try it again. And then swallowing. Try to do that about five times. Can't, it's hard to do. You can't do swallows one right after another like we did with the ease. But it what, but what it does do, it helps work that muscle, this uh, posterior pharyngeal wall, which is a peristaltic movement. It moves it forward, touch the base of the tongue. And you may have to take a sip of water, swallow normally, then do a masako, which is the tongue sticking out of the mouth and then you have the residuals in the mouth to do a swallow. It's very hard to do a completely dry swallow. So do that about five times. And then once you're done with that, there's another um, swallowing exercise called the uh, Mendelssohn. And that is where you are doing a normal swallow, but you stop in the middle of the swallow. And again, it's where the superior laryngeal muscles are lifting the larynx up. When it lifts the larynx up, the epiglottis drops, covers the airway, can't breathe, opens up the upper esophageal sphincter where the food and liquid goes down. Now this is always flat when it opens it up. It's kind of pneumatic-like in that it kind of food and liquids uh, sucks right down into the esophagus, into the stomach. 
So it'll look like this. I'm gonna take my glasses off so that you can see a little bit of strain in my face because I'm holding my breath for three to five seconds. If I'm doing a swallow, my larynx goes up, I stop, I don't let it go back down, I don't finish the swallow. So watch me. And then I release. And when I release, there's air that's coming out and I, you can kind of hear me say, and I release. So let me try it again. Here we go, I'm gonna swallow. and I release. So I've, you hold about three to five seconds. Very good exercise for uh, swallowing. As Parkinson's progresses, it does affect swallowing on almost all uh, patients. The last swallowing exercise that's very good is called the Shakur. These are all named after uh, doctors who invented them. <laughs> and with this one is you lay on a firm bed or on a, a carpeted, a soft carpeted floor or rug and you lift just your head up and look at your toes. Keep your shoulders back on there and you try to hold for 60 seconds. This is working very in-depth, deep muscles for swallowing and the su supporting muscles that are for the neck and for swallowing. So that was that's one I'm not gonna show how to do, but it, explain, explanation is pretty clear. You're just laying on something firm, lifting just your head up, look at your toes, and you try to hold it for 60 seconds. That's what's difficult to do, is um, holding your head up for 60 seconds, but try to work up to that. Okay, next on the list of exercises that we do, I'm just gonna tell you about it, and it's something that's very good to do. Um, it's so you can stop the video and do it. So what you wanna do is you pucker your lips, and you hold that kiss, for 60 seconds with the last 10 seconds pulling tighter. So you're watching uh, your clock or second hand and you're holding it. So what happens is you start after, once you start, you know, get into it, you're not up to, you're maybe up to 30, 35 seconds. There's so usually a little bit of a release. The muscles are just kind of relaxing just slightly. That's why the last 10 seconds you're pulling tighter. And the purpose of this is we want to maintain labial seal uh, because that's how we monitor our saliva that it builds up in our mouth and then with gravity and, and us, us aging, we're kind of falling forward a little bit and pooling of the saliva happens. Then if we don't have a good labial seal and we don't monitor, we don't swallow enough to swallow the saliva that we're producing, we start to drool because it pools there and it spills out. So we want to avoid that. So you pucker for 60 seconds and then right after the 60 seconds, you you smile and you make sure your lips are sealed. And the reason why we want to have our lips sealed is that's the reason we are able to, that's how we monitor our uh, saliva in our mouth. We don't uh, keep our mouth open because uh, saliva will spill out. So you hold this 60 seconds, tighten the corners of your mouth, you tighten the corners of the mouth and last 10 seconds of the 60, you pull tighter because again, you start to loosen a little bit. So pause the video and do those two. You hold, pucker for 60 seconds and you smile for 60 seconds. Okay, welcome back. We're gonna do some exercises to stretch the muscles of our neck that are supportive in swallowing and voice and there's, it helps with some of the littler muscles inside. So chin to the right shoulder, we're gonna hold and I want you to feel a good stretch on our left side of our neck and you want to kind of pull that left shoulder down so it's a good strong uh, stretch and the chin as close to that right shoulder as possible. We're holding for a few more seconds. And then after about 20, 25 seconds, you pull, turn your chin to the other side. Feel the sensation of this muscle stretching here. Pull that shoulder back and let's hold for about 20 to 25 seconds. These exercises are great to do every day if i uh, just do a little bit of them it's it's uh it's good it helps to maintain where your status of where you are okay next part is right ear to right shoulder drop your left pull it back chin at two o'clock position so you can get a stretch all the way down anterior and then to the tip of the shoulder Okay, 
high. Next, left ear to the left shoulder, drop your right, pull it back, chin at 10 o'clock position. Okay, and then the last one is just chin to chest, and then you're stretching the muscles on each side of the cervical spine. Okay, last exercise that we do before we do a little cognitive is um, um, Inhaling through the nose for a count of three. Exhaling through the nose for a count of eight. So keeping the lips sealed, let's go. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, two, three. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that was pretty close to 10 wasn't counting. All right, last little bit that we usually do is an exercise for uh, cognitive thinking. So we're going to do what's called what a pair. So it's kind of like Harvard and Yale, thunder and lightning, they kind of go together. But if we said wonder and Perrier, we would, that would be like wonder bread, bread and Perrier is water, bread and water. So I'm going to give you uh, some clues to what these familiar pa pairs are. So here we go. Stop, the film director says, and arid. What does this uh, director say in a movie when he wants it to stop? Cut and dry. Good. TV's Mr. Serling and a spool of film. What was Serling's first name? Rod. And I bet a, sp a spool of film is a reel, so rod and reel. Okay, great. A bill passed by Congress and a meal request to a waiter. A bill that's passed by Congress is law. Law and order. Good. Okay, a method of curing meat and reflective glass fixtures. A method of curing meat and reflective glass fixtures. I bet you're thinking smoke and mirrors. Good. Let's try this one. The person who transports your belongings to a new house and a salt dispenser. Movers and shakers. Good. Court proceeding and a mistake. Court proceedings is a trial and a mistake is an error. So trial and error. Let's try this one. Light complexion, another term for light complexion, and a rectangle with four equal sides. Fair and Square, good, okay. A long jacket and to fasten with a rope. A long jacket would be 
coat and then to fasten with a rope or your shoelaces, you tie, coat and tie. Good. The opposite of multiply and to vanquish. Divide and conquer. A physical attack and an energizer. Physical attack is an assault. An energizer is a, like the bunny, battery. So assault and battery. Good. Let's try another one. A tune or an aria and the cha-cha. Song and dance. Very good, y'all did great. Okay, it's a good idea to do these exercises uh, that we did at the beginning of this video um, every day or every other day, or just kind of keep that in mind that these are all exercises that are good for breath support, uh, strength of the voice, uh, swallowing, cognitive. Um, I think that's it. Those kind of the four areas I kind of focus on. Uh, but also, uh, this is uh, this video comes to you from HAPS, Houston Area Parkinson's Society, which has a, a ton of exercises and, and videos and classes to attend, either in person or Zoom. I do a Zoom class on Thursdays from 10.30 to 11.30, and uh, they also have Zoom classes for, I think, uh, yoga and physical therapy, other speech, um, I think they may have speech classes or speech videos, but a lot of good exercises uh, for you to do, and they're free, and it's a good resource for people who have Parkinson's and the caregivers, okay? Until then, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.